What's going on to all my Peacemaker fans out there? and Welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again, breaking down episode four of Peacemaker, which I personally think might be the best episode of the series so far. The character stuff between Chris and his dad. I don't know what to make of Adebayo. Can we trust her? And speaking of trust, we're definitely talking about Crimson in this spoiler review, but before we break it all down, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you are new to the channel, we are on the quest to 20,000 subscribers, so if you want to be a part of the community, make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this review, we'll make sure to like the review, share the review, but more importantly, once you've seen the episode, go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments, your pros, your cons, favorite moment, least favorite moment. What was the moment that had you laughing the hardest? And we got to talk about your theories. What are the butterflies? Are they good? Are they bad? Let's talk about Vigilante. Do you trust Adebayo? And what's your thoughts on Crimson and what you hope to see in the weeks ahead? Let's talk about that in the comments section. So just my brief thoughts before we break down this episode. Like I said, I think this is the best episode so far. I mentioned it last week. I thought two was better than one and three was better than two. I think four is the best out of all four episodes. I was really intrigued to see this episode because this is the one out of the three episodes or the four episodes so far that wasn't directed by James Gunn. The director here was Jody Hill. I thought they did a great job of continuing the same tone, momentum, having the pacing, and just a great direction overall. But just from, like I said, the character perspectives, when you look at Adebayo and you look at John Cena's character, Chris, who they're the two leads of the show, they have so much in common. When you think of who their parents are and how people perceive their parents, that they hate them and, and they're evil people, but they still love their parents. I love that stuff. Vigilante can't do any wrong in my eyes. I love that character. We're going to talk about one of the best moments of the show, and we're definitely talking about me being a Batman fan, that Batman joke, and it's just so much richness that this episode had. But I think it's great. It does have its flaws. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I thought this was the best episode so far, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section. So let's break it all down. Starting off with my man, Vigilante. I was concerned. Was he going to ever walk again? And yes, he will be okay. But putting all that aside, I love that running joke with his toe being cut in half. Will he be okay? I, I love that. But the big question is, what will our crew do with Judo Master, who we'll talk about here in a little bit? But moving on to Adebayo, because we're going to talk about her a lot in this episode. She's struggling with the, the death of the uh, bodyguard last week, but she's saying that throughout the episode that she's killed someone. This is the first time I killed someone. This is the first time of this. Question for you all, is it a front or is she being sincere? Because we all know her mom is Amanda Waller and she was very much like her daughter, very much like her mother in this episode with all the manipulation. Is she lying? Is she telling the truth? Let me know your thoughts on her so far. I love the way Danielle Brooks is playing her. That's why you cast someone like her because she's so sincere. You just love her so much, but she's got some demons. She's got some secrets. More importantly, Episode one, when when Amanda was talking to her daughter, she said that you haven't, you need to use the God-given gift you were given. Is that being a manipulator? Is she a metahuman? I don't know. I'm excited to find out, but let me know. Can we trust her? Let's talk about that in the comment section. But moving on to a thing that I want to talk about here. I don't know if this is a important Easter egg, but I don't know if you all noticed when Chris was going into his dad's house when he was trying to avoid the nosy neighbor. They were on the news talking about Charlie, the missing gorilla. Now, I don't know if this is a pop culture reference to Charlie that lives in Toronto, the gorilla that's in that zoo since like the 70s, or if this is like a nod towards Gorilla Grodd. I don't know if that's something to look forward to. Is it that gorilla going to become a butterfly? Let me know your thoughts of that, but it might just be like a little throwaway line, but I don't know. James Gunn doesn't normally throw things in the screen without having meaning to it, but let's talk about a moment here as we get the glance at Chris's dad's secret lair, which Vigilante, Adrian is tagging along, which again, Adrian's so fantastic, and I love that not only is Adrian as Vigilante a badass, he's hilarious, but he also asks the questions, as the audience would know, how the hell is this space so large? How does it fit in the house as Peacemaker tells him that it's a quantum unfolding storage area? So thank you, Vigilante, because I was curious about that when we saw that episode one. But one of the best moments in there as, you know, we see Peacemaker taking on the helmets and we get that glance at the uh, the white dragon suit, which I'm not too familiar comic book wise. There's a lot of obscureness in this show and I love that about it. It's not like characters I'm familiar with. So we get that glance of that suit and we'll talk about white dragon a little bit here. But I think this is one of many great moments, but this might be one of my favorite moments of the show so far. 
I'm a Batman fan. He's my favorite superhero or vigilante, whatever you want to call him. But when Chris is having that conversation with his nosy neighbor about a topic that as Batman fans, we have all the time. I don't know how you all feel about Chris Peacemaker calling Batman It was funny, but he has a deep conversation regarding <laughs> Batman being a jackass that he collects these villains a la, you know, Joker, to throws them in jail, and we know they're going to break out, throws them back in jail. It's like, you do the same thing, you're insane, right? And versus Peacemaker, his enemies are six feet deep. That conversation to me is one of the funniest jokes of the show so far, and it's just, as a Batman fan, it's a question that I ask. Yes, I, I don't like the idea of Batman killing, but, I mean, you, you keep throwing them in jail for them to come out, Batman. You got to have a better system than that. So that conversation alone, to me, made this my favorite episode, as the neighbor calls Chris a supervillain. And, and just putting the jokes aside, I love the, the, the conversation there, just regards to how Chris perceives how he handles his villains. He, this is one of many reasons why he considers himself to do, to protect people at any cost. He kills people because he feels that that's the best decision to make. So even though there's a joke in there, there's still some character moments you could take away from that conversation, but the joke was still hilarious as hell. So even though we, we have the conversation throughout this episode between Adrian and Chris, Chris addressing the fact that his father is a racist and he goes and tells, you know, Adrian, yeah, I know, I, I'm very aware and I think we can all relate to that in regards to people we love and not referring to racism but just in general we know our best friends our moms or dads our brothers or sisters our significant others might have flaws but we still love them right and we have chris saying that you know we share things we have the hatred of crime is something that we have in common you know he makes things for me so it's, it's just very interesting to see peacemaker chris more importantly trying to find the good in the bad, which speaks to him as a character. And again, this is the stuff I love about this episode and what I'm loving about the show so far overall. But we get some more insight within this episode of Chris's backstory. We get little by little in regards to the, the treatment that his dad gave him as a kid. And we actually get a visualization of that later in the episode. And again, what I love about our two leads, Adebayo and Chris, is again, everyone considers Chris's dad, which he is a despicable, he's a white supremacist, he's an evil terrible guy and we look at that with Adebayo with Amanda Waller not only have we heard it in the Suicide Squad and now in this show she's despicable she's like she does anything to get the mission done that's how people view them but Chris and Adebayo that's their mom and that's their dad and they love them regardless of their flaws so I love that connection between those two characters let me know what you all think about that but I think that's just fantastic writing but we get for the second time in the show we keep hearing about Chris's brother and his brother and his brother. What happened to his brother, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But going back to Adebayo, who's having her heart-to-heart -heart with Adrian, who at this point she knows is vigilante, and I love this moment. She plans to see to manipulate him to have him kill Chris's dad because at this point, Chris's dad knows that they switched up the fingerprints and the car ID to put him in jail. So I love that stuff there, but the biggest thing is this is Amanda Waller's daughter, and that is something that Amanda would do, manipulating someone. So again, is this whole innocent girl, you know, haven't killed anyone uh, type of personality so far, is it genuine or is it just part of the ruse? I'm loving that mystery box so far. But moving on, Adrian Vigilante, such a great character. I was laughing my ass off when he was getting the trash can and throwing it into the window before he can get arrested and we'll talk about him when he's actually in jail but let me know in the comments is it just me or is adrian vigilante the best character in the show i think he's fantastic but let's get into one of my favorite moments as far as action sequences cobra kai is let loose aka judo master round two a peacemaker we get insults thrown we get some pretty decent hand-to-hand -hand combat between the two and the question i have for you all with judo master because again this is another character i have no idea about in the comics is he a metahuman does he have the butterfly in him? Because when he's kicking and punching, those blows are pretty hard. So I'm to assume he's a metahuman, but I don't think he's a butterfly because he doesn't have the personality traits or the, the emptiness that we've seen from the people that host the butterflies. But either here or there, that action sequence was great. And as Peacemaker has the upper hand, he's as uh, Judo Master is telling him, you got the butterflies all wrong. They're here to, and boom, on a bio, perfectly shoots him in the chest for someone that's never shot a gun before 
that was a pretty good shot. Again, is it all a ruse? And, and she just happened to be there. He's not dead, but again, that's just another red flag for Autobio's character. But again, that fight was pretty great to me. But we see Peacemaker lie to Harcourt early in the episode about killing a butterfly. He kept the butterfly, which I think was a smart idea. And he's going to learn more about the butterflies than what they're telling him. Uh, but speaking of a butterfly... Let's talk about Crimson, who's pissed at this moment to find out that Adebayo set Adrian to kill Chris's dad, and, and they obviously set it up for they can get him out of jail, but uh, Crimson, it, uh, we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, I'm loving how now thinking about Crimson, of the moment he had with John in episode three regarding not having emotions, not being able to say when he's cold or hot and hungry, how long has he been a butterfly and why do they have that empty shellness to them in regards to not be, I mean, obviously they're aliens, but I wonder how long he has been a butterfly and if Amanda knows this, and, and we'll get to my thoughts at the end of the episode, but Crimson explains so much of his weirdness uh, so far in the episodes, but Let's talk about my favorite moment in the episode, and it happens to involve my favorite character, Adrian Chase, aka Vigilante, making his way over to the White Dragon's table with all his little white supremacist friends, and he's talking about, hey, let's play a game. Let's talk about all the stuff that black people have done to the culture and has added to, you know, Americans' culture, and I thought that that moment was just so damn funny and obviously pissing off the white supremacists a moment that I love but seeing him kick their ass and you know the thing that did suck is unfortunately Adrian let it slip out that it was that he knows Peacemaker and that's you know now Peacemaker's dad thinks that Peacemaker's trying to kill his own dad which weirdly he might actually appreciate because he thinks his son I don't know if that might actually work out for uh, Peacemaker's advantage but again Vigilante Adrian such a perfect character but let's wrap up the episode as we learn that peacemaker may have had something to do with his brother's death as we get that conversation between him and hardcore as far as his files go and we actually get this kind of flashback as we wrap up the episode and by the way is it me or seeing John Cena dance around is just like the weirdest thing to see because he's such a big, gigantic man. It looks like a bear dancing, but either here nor there, we see that when Chris was a kid that he had to kill a man in cold blood, which obviously ties into how his dad raised him. But we get these moments of him having the flashback of Rick Flagg when he killed him and Peacemaker, what a joke. That moment there, him having this kind of a, a, a smaller, intimate moment with his brother, which leads into his brother dying. I don't think it was any uh, blood wounds or like a, a shot from a gun or being stabbed. It looked like he was like overdosing on something. Now, I don't know if Chris killed his brother because of his father's influence and he was maybe deciding to do evil deeds from his dad. I don't know if he was a drug addict. I mean, obviously, we'll find it out a little bit later in the show. But again, this is the stuff I'm loving. Peacemaker, we, we saw all of his glory in the Suicide Squad, but this show has given us who is Chris, the man behind the mask, and I'm loving all that stuff from the show so far, but as we wrap up, Adebayo is piecing together, you know, she found the car from the, the butterfly from episode one and kind of putting the connections together, she calls Crimson, he says, okay, I'm on my way. He's sitting there watching a movie, and we know he doesn't have a personality, so he doesn't laugh. I don't know what movies of Mel Gibson film. Let me know in the comments. It might have been the movie where he's like in women's head, and I don't know if that correlates to the butterflies being in people's head, but we see him eating food, and the tongue comes out alluding, and not alluding, but he is a butterfly. Does Amanda know that? Does anyone know that? Why are the butterflies chasing other butterflies? Is it like a power type of thing where it's like certain butterflies didn't want the butterfly pandemic or the, the other butterflies to get out to take over? I, I don't know. I do not know what's going on, but I know I'm here for it. And I will be back next week to talk about episode five. But right now, as far as, like I said, from a character standpoint, this is the best episode. The jokes that, and I didn't mention my criticism. My only criticism was this episode. And this is just a James Gunn because he's he didn't direct it, but he wrote this episode. It's the prolonged jokes. The two jokes that to me that comedy subjective but the two jokes that just ran on too long is when we had adrian and chris in their fa in his father's lab when they were talking about the duck i thought that the duck joke just ran too long and just wasn't funny to me and then the other joke was when chris was talking to his dad in prison and he was comparing himself to a dick it's like the stuff is like okay <laughs> that's funny but then it's just like james gunn i think sometimes james gunn projects his kind of personality in his writing which i know a lot of great writers do but i feel like whenever there's like a he doesn't do this all the time but i feel like sometimes when there's like a serious moment Adrian telling his best friend that your dad's a racist and then obviously Chris and his dad having that conversation he undercuts it with a joke because I feel like he's like 
personally, I don't know James Gunn, obviously I would love to meet him, but I feel like sometimes when he's uncomfortable as a person, he likes to throw in a joke. I think he puts that in his writing. I think sometimes it over, it doesn't like take away the seriousness from the scene, but it just kind of like drags on way too long. So that was like my only criticism that I had with this episode. And obviously other episodes too, I feel like sometimes James Gunn just gets too much James Gunnisms with his jokes into his TV shows and his movies. So that was my only criticism. Besides those two things, I thought this episode was great, but that's just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments. Pros, cons, favorite moment, your thoughts on the Batman joke, and is there some truth to that? Your thoughts of Crimson, out of bio, can we trust her? And can we trust these butterflies? Let's talk about that in the comments below. If you stuck around to this point of this review, I appreciate every single one of you all. Before you leave, make sure if you haven't already to like this video, share this video, and of course, subscribe to the channel where 20,000 is right around the corner, and I'm so happy we're growing this community. But again, I appreciate you all. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you're staying safe. We'll be back talking about Peacemaker next week. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe, check out my other content. We'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.